now I'm going to teach you about what I call the three final special moves of kinematics. Now, these three concepts that will be used all the time by, by you to solve kinematics problems. The very first special move or the special method to solve problems is that you can use the gradient of a distance time graph. The instantaneous speed of an object can be calculated from the gradient. The gradient would be the steepness of any part of the graph. So essentially I'm saying that the steepness of the line on a distance time graph would actually give you the speed at that particular point. So for example, if I asked you what is the speed of the object at this line over here, people who didn't learn this might say, this is a distance time graph. So how can I possibly find the speed? The answer is, of course you can. Using the coordinates from the graph, where let's say this point over here is number one point, producing x1 and y1, and using this point as a number two point, producing x2 and y2. x2, the coordinate from the x point will be 20, y2, the coordinate will be 10, x1 will be 0, and y1 will be 0. So after putting them into the calculation for gradient, we will get the final answer of 0 0.5 meters per second. And that will be the speed of the object at any point along this straight line. Now let's go to the second special move. Once again, we are using gradient. However, now we are using gradient of a speed time graph. So the instantaneous acceleration of any part on the speed time graph can be calculated as well. And this can be calculated from the gradient. It can also be calculated from the formula as well. If you have a speed time graph and they ask you to find the acceleration, let's say at this point, or this point, or this point, what you have to do is to find the end of the graph at any of these points and you would find the instantaneous acceleration. So, for example, what is acceleration in the first 10 seconds? You can use either the formula A equals to V minus U over T or you can use the graphical method which is acceleration will be the gradient of the graph at that point. So, you can use the coordinates method just like the one before. So, the first method is where you take the final speed 10 minus the initial speed of 0. Then you divide all this by the time taken, which is 10 seconds. This will get you 1 meters per second squared. Now, the second method is taking the gradient, which is the gradient of this line. So, we take two points that are on this line, this point and this point. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So, the coordinates of the first point are 0, 0, which is x1 and y1. And the coordinates of the second point are 10, 10, which is x2 and y2. Once you complete this calculation, you will once again find that you get the same result as the first formula, 1 meters per second squared. Now we get to the final special move. If you have a speed time graph, you can actually find the total distance traveled by the object. The distance traveled by the object is the area under the speed time graph. So let's say over here we have a simple example of something that is traveling at exactly 20 meters per second at a constant rate. You the area under the line like this and you drew a box and you calculated the area of this, you would get the distance. So here is 0 to 20. So this portion will be 20 units in distance. This thing here is 0 to 5. So this will be 5 units in distance. 20 times 5 will get you 100. And therefore, this object would travel 100 meters these 5 seconds. Now, it may not be so simple. The object may not travel at a perfectly constant speed. So, let's try this example. A vehicle produces a speed time graph something more like this, trapezoid. To get a distance traveled on a speed time graph, you should get the area below the graph. Now, if you know the trapezoid rule, you can use that to find the area in a trapezoid. However, for me, I like to simplify things by separating this graph out into triangles and rectangles. So the distance traveled or the area under the graph, to me, I would first get the area of this triangle, then this rectangle, then this triangle. Let's try it. So in this triangle, it will be 10 times 10 divided by 2. I'll divide by 2 because this is a triangle after all half base times height, that's the area of a triangle. I'll add it to 10 times 10, the area of the rectangle. And then after that, 
over here is 5 times 10 divided by 2 the area of this last triangle after I get all of this and I add them all up together it should get 175 meters